Question three says simplify, and uh, it also contains this uh, requirement that your answers should only have positive exponents um, when you're finished. So um, a lot of us are, I think many of us are getting to a place where we're feeling more and more comfortable dealing with um, these monomials that have exponents in them and all the various things that we can do with them. But I think some of us are still working um, earnestly to get to a point where we understand things better. So a couple things I want to point out. Um, let's start with the the first the first one here. And uh, by the way, some, pe some students have asked me to, t to attempt to have uh, black backgrounds. They say that it, it's easier for them to, to see the see these so I'm, I'm trying this and just see how it works so on this first one a um, couple things I want to point out when I look at 2x to the negative second power I want to be real clear this is quite different than 2x to the negative second power so there's a huge distinction there the only thing that's being raised to the negative second power is x not the 2. The 2 is just a number there that's involved in part of this. It's, a, it's one of the factors of this product. And in fact, when I look at it, I can see that there is a value of 2, and there's also a value of 5 that are um, here. And if I look all the way across, those are the only two um, constants that I have, the two, um, I guess, numerical coefficients for this entire monomial. So. I can multiply those two together right off the bat, and 5 times 2 uh, is 10, so that's going to be part of my solution. In fact, I'll do that. I'll go ahead and write a, a 10. Um, the other thing that's, the other couple pieces that are happening there is what precisely is x to the negative second power? Now, even, even today, I'm still getting some interesting things. Um, this has nothing to do with a negative number, right? This is this is not negative two times anything. Um, I'll remind you the the way that we deal with negative exponents is we neutralize them with a sufficient positive exponent. So if I was to multiply two to the negative second by this giant one, right, in the form of x squared over x squared. When I do that, I want you to notice what happens. The first thing that happens is in my numerator, I end up getting x to the negative second times x to the second power, which becomes x to the zero power, which is the number one. So this numerator goes from being you know, an x to the negative second power to just the one. Now the trade-off is, is now there are two factors of x that are in my denominator. So this is this is um, you know how I like to think about dealing with negative exponents because every single step of it's rational. I always understand how to neutralize them by creating that base to the zero power, and when I do that, I have to put sufficient factors down in the to denominator or numerator wherever they may be. Now, of course, at a certain point, we look at this and we say, hey. I'm observing a pattern here. It appears that if I have negative exponents, for example, if I have a to the negative third power, that that's equivalent to 1 over a to the third. And you'd be right for thinking that. And it's also true that if I had, for example, um, let's do 1 over 1 over b to the negative second power, that that's equivalent to b to the second power. And you're right again. But you're right, not because of magic, but because we understand these two principles. It's always okay to multiply an expression by the number one, and it's always okay to build a number one such that you neutralize the negative exponent. So you can see now my denominator, I have b to the zero power. b to the zero power is just one, and in my numerator I now have b squared. So this becomes simply b squared. So. <laughs> That's quite a way around that, but what that means is, in terms of this monomial now, I do have two factors of x that live in my denominator, and I'm going to choose to put them there and think about them like that for a moment anyways. Um, in my numerator, I can see, and the rest of it, there, I can see that there's six factors of y. I can also see that there's 
three factors of x that are in the numerator as well. Right? I've got the x to the third. The other thing that I have here is this y to the third getting squared. And if I remember what that means, it means that I have two factors of y cubed. So this is y cubed times, oops, y cubed. And uh, each one of those has three factors of y. So I'm looking at a total of six factors of y, or y to the sixth power. So I have another times y to the sixth. So I can clean this up a little bit more um, real quickly just by com collecting the factors of y. So I can write this as 10x to the third, y to the twelfth power, all over x squared. And then there's one final thing that we can do. And yeah, I will kind of belabor the point um, because I want understanding. If I look at my numerator, I can see that there are three factors of x. And in my denominator, there's two factors of x. And if I clean that up by looking at that giant one, I can see that I'm left with a single factor of x in my numerator. So the final answer, and I've really made a mess of this, um, that I would write down would be, um, this is going to be, I guess I can write it right here. The answer is 10 times um, x uh, times y to the 12th power. So let's switch our focus now to part B. Um, in part B, I can see that I've got 6 um, times x, and that is being raised to the negative 1 power. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and take that entire expression. And uh, again, this, the process in which I would do this is I would look at this, and I would say I'm going to multiply this by uh, 6x to the first power over uh, 6 times x all to the first power. When I do that, the product in the numerator becomes 6 times x all to the 0 power, which just equals 1. And in my denominator, I have just 6, ti six times x, right? And it is to the first power, so it doesn't change anything. I could just write it as 6, 1 over 6x. So this, right, indicates that there are a fact, there's a factor of 6 and there's a factor of x and they're both in the denominator. So I probably will just write that those in the denominator. In my numerator there's a factor of 27. There are 8 factors of x, x to the 8th, and there are 3 factors of y. Now when I look at x to the 8th over x, I understand that um, there's a giant one there, right? I can look at this, and this um, is, or x to the eighth, I can rewrite as x to the seventh times an additional factor of x. And I can look at that over this x, right? So I can see that with one of the factors of x that's in the numerator and the one factor of x that's in the denominator, I can create a giant one. And it leaves me with seven factors of x in my numerator. So. Now I'm going to write down this as 27x to the seventh power times y to the third. And this is all going to be over the number 6. So last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the 27 over 6. Uh, 27 is, let's see, it's, it's 3 times 9. That's correct. So I'll, I'll write it as 3 times 9. That's 27 over um, 6, which is 3 times 2. So again, I'm looking at it like this. I see there's a giant 1 there. So my final answer for this would be to take this and write it as um, 9 uh, x to the 7th y cubed. And that'll all be over the number 2. So finally, let's turn our attention to part C. So in C, um, quite a few students saw the y to the negative fourth over y to the fourth and decided that there's no difference between y to the negative fourth and y to the fourth. And they just called this 1. Um, well, there is a difference, and this is not y to the positive fourth in the numerator, it's y to the negative fourth. And if I neutralize that, I could multiply by y to the fourth over y to the fourth. 
Again, I selected y to the fourth because this, oh, that, that highlighter is not going to work. This, no, highlighters will not work here. I'm sorry, let me not use those. Um, I selected that because when I multiply y to the fourth times this, um, y to the negative fourth rather times y to the fourth, I get y to the zero power, which equals the number one. So I've got a one in the numerator. And in my denominator now I have eight factors of y. So this is one over y to the eighth. So a big part of this, right, all of this part right here is y to the eighth in the denominator. So I'm going to write that. I'll put a nine, an x to the first. I don't need to put the one, but I will. And then I've got a y to the eighth. Um, in my numerator, I've got a 3 and an x squared. So there's a couple more simplifications that can happen. If I look at the x's, it's pretty clear. I don't think many of us struggle with this, that x squared over x is just x. So I've got a 3x. The other thing that's pretty clear is if I look at the 3 over 9, that's 3 over 3 times 3, right? So I can see that there's a 1 left behind there. So in my numerator, I've got a 1 and an x. So I have just x left over. And in the denominator, there's a 3 and a y to the 8th. So the answer to the last problem in this page is x over 3y to the 8th power.